Welcome back. It's been a few weeks since we've done an update on the pre-runner build. Um, we've got a lot of things that have finally started coming together. We're pretty much almost finished with final assembly and the mock-up phases. And then we're going to start disassembly and start taking things to get powder coated. The bed will be rhino lined, so on and so forth. As you can see, we have the Kibitech battery tray with dual Optimus. We are relocating the batteries to the rear. Uh, we needed more clearance up front, Zach can show you. We had to move the fuse panel and the stock battery in order to get full bump on 37s on the passenger side. He finished up these rear fenders that um, you saw a few weeks ago. I ended up making a mistake and not allowing for the sway bar end links, as you can see on this downside. The sway bar end links are on the inboard side of the fender well tub. So Zach ended up adding about an inch and five eighths. And you can see the seam here to the original tub and then replenished and shaped. They're all finally welded in. We were able to find a factory seam in the floor. It has a broke flange where it was seam sealed in the stock location. So Zach went ahead and broke the bottom side of the fender so we get more rigidity and it's way more structurally sound than what the stock ones were and then he also put in this basic splash guard allowing plenty of clearance for the 3516s and the 2514s there's plenty of room no chance of them getting hot but it will keep all of the road spray and trash from getting all gummed up inside the fins and as you can see everything is happy at full bump and we can stuff 37s all the way locked away. As you can see here, we got the Kibbe Tech battery tray with the dual red tops. So we're gonna mount it roughly somewhere right here. We had Sean come in a couple days ago and you know we ran some rough wiring just to figure out where we can run everything. But we're gonna figure it out the best spot for the batteries will be here in the bed. Run them down to the center there, it'll be the cleanest looking. And then we got uh we got the bed cage in from Kibby. As you can see, we got the shocks just rough ran and mounted, but we'll run the so we'll mount the trans coolers here. They'll they'll be thermostat controlled with dual electric fans. And you can see here we had to cut holes in the bed for the bed cage, so we'll have to clean all that up and make an access panel so it can still be removable. We got these bars in here, they're just for mock-up, just to hold the bed flat. There's no once we cut it, cut the tubs out and cut the uh, center out for the C notch, the bed was really wobbly and no rigidity to it, so we just added these to keep it straight and strong so we can stand in here and work. Yes, yeah, so you can see here we got the Kibbe Tech battery tray with dual red top Optimus. We removed the front one, front battery. I'll show you that in a little bit, but we're gonna mount the batteries back here and then uh, we'll run all the electrical to that. That's what we're gonna make this a dual purpose. That's why we cut it all the way out here. The dual purpose that we're gonna hide some electrical, the computers and some wires in here. And then obviously we had to cut it out for the pumpkin for the full, for full travel here. So that's why we haven't filled that in yet. We'll hide the computers and some electrical wires under here also. And we'll make access panels of those so we can get to them easily. We can run lights here, which we haven't decided yet what which lights we're gonna run. So if there's anything y'all recommend, let us know. So we talked about where the battery is mounted in the back and you saw that stock battery is located here. We removed it for more clearance for the tires once we get all that. But uh, we're waiting on suspension. So since this is article one in the first 2023 truck getting built, from Kibbe Tech and from us. We're still waiting on the parts for that to come in, but he's, they're engineering that right now and building it, manufacturing it. So we went ahead and cut all this out. I just saw in a previous video, and while, we were, while Sean was here last week, we removed the stock battery tray to give us some more clearance and room for the wood tubs. We'll, get, we'll start making the wood tubs once we get the pullover bypasses and all the front suspension mounted and made. As we talked about before, we are running a Switch Pro's control module and switch setup in this. And what is nice about these as Zach stated earlier, we went ahead and deleted the stock battery and battery tray. It takes up a massive amount of space and it eats up pretty much the prime real estate that you're going to need for up travel. But we don't want to move the fuse boxes and the circuit breakers all the way to the rear. So once we get the shock hoop installed, there will be a removable engine cage that crosses over with two tube clamps and we're going to go ahead and make some tabs that go off of the fixed side to where all of these mount and since 90% of your 
aftermarket accessories, your lights, fans, everything is all external, by running one of these, you eliminate the fact of having to home run and run a massive amount of wires into an actual switch box. All of your switches get wired into this, and then it just uses a small piggyback harness that will go through the firewall and one of the waterproof locations. And then Zach went ahead and gave us an access panel on the side of the console. So now we have access to the Switch Pros, the shift control module, they have, this is where the sensor for your remote start and your key and everything is located. And also we had to have plenty of access because that is where the stock Bose subwoofer and all of the electronic modules for the dash R. So like Jake said, we made an access panel in the center console to access all the electronics that we need to. And then we'll just make another plate for this to cover the hole and we'll recess it and nut plate it and mount it there. And then we'll get it upholstered and covered. And once it's all, bolted on, it'll look, look like one piece again. As you can see in the back, we got the holes for the vents and for the uh, heated seat modules. That's what these two are here for. Next up, we need to weld the, well, finish welding this up. It's all tacked for now. And then we're gonna make a, we'll have to do a hinge and then foam the top. So we're working on the hinge design and the latch currently. Once we get those figured out, we can, uh, we'll get that built and made and then we can foam the top and get it upholstered. So we've had a lot of questions about the products we've been using. We use a lot of fur items for our two welding. And everyday, I guess everyday fab use. I like these, the goat gloves. A lot of people use them for TIG welding only, but I use them for pretty much all shop use for all fab. I like them thinner. I like to, you know, be able to feel the metal and, you know, feel the grinder and when I'm using them. So that's what I like. They also have the, the fur work gloves. They're a little bit thicker. Take a little bit longer to get broke in, but once they're broke in, they're really great gloves also. And then for our, for the truck, we've been, Pretty, I'd say 98% we've been using the Jazzy Cup. It's a good universal uh, TIG cup, number 10. We also, we also have the uh, his little universal kit, it's the Furrick starter kit, and uh, you can get it at any of these items at dogfab.com. So we'll probably use this for welding up the exhaust, the BBW, it's a little bit bigger cup. We just use a regular old small one for doing any aluminum that we're doing. And we also got the, uh, the Furrick. Tungsten. It's a one-stop shop for all your TIG welding needs. Okay. As you've seen me wear predominantly BMX gloves, a lot of this stuff, especially on the sheet metal when you go to DA, leaves micro splinters everywhere. And just something as simple as trying to wipe or prep a surface with um, alcohol or lacquer thinner, you'll get shards left and right. And I was liking, because I've got more precise feel uh, but they don't offer very much protection against heat. A lot of the times I've got to hold stuff for Zach to tack in place. So that's why we ended up going with these for it got me hooked up with. They've got a pretty decent amount of heat coverage, but you still have a lot of precise control and touch. So they've been great for grinding. I've smoked them with the cutoff wheel a few times and I never ended up getting any nicks. Obviously don't go put your hand in the bandsaw, but they, they are definitely they offer a great a great amount of protection for as thin as they are. And they're some of our favorite setups. That Speaking we've of cutoff wheel, we've had questions and DMs and comments about what, what our cutoff wheel is we're using in the pictures and video that Miller took of us. So our day-to-day -day is this Ingersoll RAN. It's an, uh, it's an older model. And actually, I bought it off eBay probably 10 years ago. So I don't know how old it is because they quit making them. But I, uh, we recently looked up and they actually come, came back out with them. And they're... What was the cost on it? Sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred bucks or something yeah. similar for something similar. So, but we also have the uh, the Mac tools. It's comparable, and they make they have a couple different versions. They have a short one, long one, long reach. You know, it's for getting into certain spots, and the balance point on them is actually really good, and they're they're both comparable. I'd say. Want to go next door and check out what the boys Brian and Ricky are up to? Let's do it. Yeah. This right here is a Ferrari SF90, okay? It is, yeah, Stradale. Um, this thing right here is electric, hybrid, and full Ferrari gas motor. Like, it tripped me out because he pulled it in yesterday, and when he did, it was like, whoa, and then he put it in reverse, and it just, it. straight Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> so this here, right here, this is the Magneti 
Morelli Race E Flux Capacitor. This thing hit 88 miles an hour, baby. We are just detailing it. We just cleaned it, just giving it spiffy back to where he can put it back into his uh, garage. Uh, awesome a, car collection. He did a track day with it? Yes, he did. He did a track day with it. Oh, because he's actually a really cool dude and he fucking drives his shit. He is not afraid to take them out on the track and see what they do, man. And um, this thing was actually, by his standards, was filthy, but I mean, it's for even being at the track, it wasn't even that bad. So you guys have seen that we've had these fab tape, fab fixture tables for a few months now, and we've been using them every day. So far, man, they've been awesome. You know, there's plenty of tooling for these guys. There's plenty of, they're super solid. We grind, weld. We do everything on these tables, and uh, we haven't had one issue with them yet. Um, there's plenty more tooling we want and need, but that'll come in time, because the stuff isn't cheap, it's, but it's super nice and high in quality. And at the end of the day, all you gotta do is spray a little bit of WD-40 on them, and Lack of thinner, wipe them off. Now for our favorite part, Zach and I catch ourselves every day, basically making sure shoelaces are tied or anything before we take a picture because there's always clowns on the internet that are gonna say something. My favorite this this week has been the Bluetooth axle or the front wheel drive pre-runner. The rear ends for these trucks, whether you're using a Curry or a Tube Works or a Camberg, they start at $7,000, they end up finishing around $16,000. This is something that carried over from the car world. It's so much easier to use a mock-up axle. You can tack to it in 20 different spaces and you're out 50 bucks instead of constantly having to baby step around, moving your tabs on your finished product. It's also way easier to work around, there's no hubs on it lighter weight less chance of anything crushing you when we are dealing with the lift and you can see how much is cantilevered off as you can see from this angle this is a two-piece drive shaft you'll have your short section the carrier bearing will ride on that k-bar there and then your final drive shaft will sit coming from that angle to your third member so it lessens the pinion angle and um, you can end up having your full travel as of right now, we haven't checked it in a few days, but I think it's gonna be strapped at around 23, 24 inches at full droop. And um, Pyrotech called us the other day. They shipped out the fuel cell. We're excited to get that back. As we said earlier, this is gonna be black. The fuel cell is raw, so to show the logo. And we did some stainless 12 point ARPs that hold it around, so that'll pop. Now we're gonna start working on the rear bumper. We're doing a mixture of a tube style with some plate because we don't like either one exclusively. Um, too much tubes, not a fan of, and just flat wraparound bumpers don't really have enough going on. They end up with more of a roll pan look, so we're going to experiment and play with that and see what what looks the best. You get a close-up on these, you can see something as simple as a sway bar end link. I've said it time and time again. Ryan has machining, the amount of time that they put into the R&D, just the tool paths, everything serves a purpose, but it's also aesthetically pleasing. I mean, it, everything comes together, it looks like a work of art. Uh, and the fact that they were able to, this, this truck is Article 1, this is the first one that we've done. Certain things have carried over from the earlier year models, but the fact that Ryan and his CAD guys can design something on the West Coast ship it to us on the east coast and it lines up with minimal tolerances it has been mind-boggling um, the level of detail that he puts into it is explains the pricing tenfold as you can see now we've got everything mocked up we are just using mock-up hardware it's just regular grade 8 stuff that we've had in the bolt bin or trip to the hardware store. Ryan has perfectly shanked this truck for us in RPI hardware. We'll be doing that on final assembly. Uh, it's a aircraft grade, grade 9 hardware. They're very expensive, but they're worth their weight in gold. Uh, the last thing you want to do is shear something when you're out blasting with your 20 inches of travel. Everything fits. The tolerances have been perfect. The machining has been perfect. Looking forward to getting it finished. Wait, what? The 
a freaking frog in here. Oh. Rest in peace, little guy. <laughs> Rest in peace, little guy. <laughs> no way. How did it start working again? He just on. He's out there with a fucking bike pump or something. <laughs>